Hello there, engineers, and welcome to this video for Prompt Geek. What a day it is. There's so much news coming out, it's gonna be hard to keep on top of it. And you'll have noticed I don't put out videos that regularly, but I'm already putting out my next video, because this is just too big to miss out on. But a talk, of course, about OpenAI's Sora video model. New videos have dropped today, and it looks incredible. Which I am quite pleasantly surprised by, because I'll tell you, when we first saw the very first clips from Sora, and uh, we saw that woman walking down the street there with the consistency and the images, I was, of course, blown away by that. I thought it looked really great. We saw some really fantastic examples. The man on the space planet in this knitted hat that he had, all of it looked absolutely stunning and amazing. There was just so many great shots that they blew my mind. And I thought this was it. I thought at the time, when Sora comes out, we're not going to have films made traditionally anymore. AI is going to definitely take over. And then I started to see some of the examples that Sam Hortman was doing. That it was really good that he was very open about it. He was taking requests from people out over on X and sharing the results with them, and I thought it was great for transparency. Uh, but I did start to notice as he was going through the examples, I mean, some of them were really, really good. And you can see here, we've got some decent consistency in the video there of the old lady. And the dogs as well. But there were a few that were coming through that just really did look very AI to me. And I thought, right, maybe it's not going to be quite as incredible. Maybe it's not as amazing out of the box as everybody is starting to think it is. But of course, maybe I actually sound a bit foolish now going back through these videos again. At the time, I was like, no, it's not as good as I thought it was. Going back through them again, I'm thinking to myself, actually, uh, was I just being overly cynical? Because looking at them now, after not looking at them for a few months, they do actually have still really look really good, even if they are a bit janky in places but certainly i hear you could tell it's ai video and i thought to myself maybe it's not actually going to be that great in reality maybe what we just saw was really sort of very cherry-picked results but today they dropped it they dropped brand new videos that they've actually been collaborating with creatives out there if you're ever going to want to know exactly how much you can do with this technology and how effective it really can be well then you're going to want to see being used by creative people. And the results are mind blowing My doubts are fully gone having seen these films. And I'm going to share them with you right now as well as my analysis on it. So let's go over to the tab on OpenAI to have a look at these videos that they've been working on. For me, I got Sora into that parents of a number of different artists. Paul Trillo, a quite well-known experimental director, has done quite a few award-winning short films and also some music videos as well. You've got Shy Kids, which is a Toronto-based production company, and a couple of others as well, which we'll have a look at here. But let's take a look at this first example. So this one is called Airhead, and this is by Shy Kids. Well, they say everyone has something unique about them, something that sets them apart. It's just in my case, you know, it's quite obvious what that thing is. I am literally filled with hot air. Yeah, living like this has its challenges. Uh, windy days, for one, are particularly troublesome. Or there was the one time my girlfriend insisted I go to the cactus store to get my Uncle Jerry a wedding present. What do I love most about my predicament? The perspective it gives me. You know, I get to see the world differently. I float above the mundane and the ordinary. I see things a different way from everyone else. Yeah, I feel like it's because of that perspective I'm reminded every day that life is fragile. We're all just a pinprick away from deflation. So I try to live life with a lightness, a buoyancy, a joie de vivre. I got a lot of ideas keeping this thing full. With any luck, I'll find a way to share them with everyone else. This was the video that convinced me. A very impressive video. Everything about it just felt top quality. I forgot I was watching an AI video, if I'm honest with you. I thought though this was an actual short film put together by some sort of AV agency. It was really, really great. And 
At this point, I am scared for the movie industry. I really am scared for the industry, but also super excited for what that means. And I'm going to double down on my first prediction, and I made this prediction months ago, that we are going to get to the point where if we want to, we will be able to ask the AI to make us a film about something we're interested in. And it's going to do that, and it's going to do all in the background, and then serve up a custom movie to us that's going to be... I, I know it sounds outlandish, and I know that it sounds like it's so far away. But actually, the curve at which this is developing now is so fast that you're going to have that ability before you even realize. This is coming fast, and we are seeing it in real time, even if it is whizzing past our eyes at a million miles an hour. And then you've got Paul Trillo, who does a lot of the experimental video, so I bet he's going to have nailed it. Whispers of power reach for the sky Lost in the rhythm, unlocking the key Through the echoes, we'll set it free In this ancient beat, we're bound With every chord, we're spellbound Caught in the echoes, we just find In the realm where legends shine Where the seekers are faint So Paul Chile, I guess he really did get the assignment here. That was on brand for Paul Trelhe, right? He's used the AI there, he's embraced the weirdness of AI video, done something you can't do of other generators right now, which is that level of consistency and the transition between each of his shots. I do like how he embraced the weirdness of AI in this. And in some ways, though, it does bring really back to my original worry with Sora, which was that it is still AI video, and there is still some weird, janky stuff. But at least the janky stuff was being used in a way that made sense for his style of video. This next one is Nick Cleverov. This is a creative director for Native Foreign, who are an Emmy-nominated creative agency in Los Angeles, and this makes a lot of sense for them as well. The first frame is he can, with a logo on it. So I guess they are going to be looking at this from the lens of how do we do brand partnership visual concepts using AI? I think we're going to find out. And so Native Foreign have done exactly what I thought they were going to do. They've tried to do some sort of branding video clips. I like the actual quality. I mean, this is where Sora really does well, is when you've got people that aren't moving too much. Even if the background's moving, they're not moving huge amounts. You get some really amazing results. But bits like this where he's walking, you can kind of get the jankiness you see there in the way that he walks. And also the people in the background. But again, when you put them close up and they're not doing a huge amount, very impressive looking. It's a bit of sort of jankiness there with this lady's face, if you watch it way out, but very good nonetheless. Sally, you can tell it's AI, there's lots of weird little inconsistencies, but even then, those inconsistencies in the generation do stay consistent throughout the shot. <laughs> so... We're much better well with AI video than I think anybody actually anticipated with this Sora model. Next, we have August Camp. 
This is an artist and musician and we'll check that out now. It's very slick and seamless. A lot of these have gone for a very retro looking filter over the top of the image. I do wonder if they prompted that or if they did some editing. I mean, obviously, they've all edited these videos afterwards. But I wonder if they added some of those retro effects in post or if that was actually done by the model, which would be very impressive. We then have the work of Don Helen Stevenson, who's a digital visual effects artist. And Don actually said that. Sora's weirdness was actually its greatest strength, saying that uh, he wasn't bound by traditional laws of physics or conventions of thought, and that rather than worrying about technical hurdles, he was able to unlock instant visualization and rapid prototyping. So I have a very good feeling this is going to be completely bonkers to watch, so let's check that out. Episode 1 unveils the Giraffe Flamingo, a stunning hybrid that roams the savanna with grace and vibrant hues. In Episode 2, we ascend the Flying Pigs, charming creatures that redefine the skies with their harmonious flight. Episode 3 plunges us into the depths to discover the Whale Puss, an elegant blend of whale and octopus ruling the ocean's abyss. Episode 4 introduces us to the Eel Cat, an aquatic enigma that combines the sleekness of an eel with the curiosity of a cat. Episode 5 presents the Bunny Armadillo, a delightful mix of bunny charm and armadillo protection, captivating our hearts. Episode 6 features the Horsefly, a small yet noble creature that buzzes with a blend of horse-like dignity and fly-like agility. Episode 7 explores the Reptilian Aru, a creature that leaps across the desert with the vigor of a kangaroo and the resilience of a reptile. Our adventure culminates in Episode 8 with the Fox Crow, a fusion of fox cunning and crow freedom soaring through the forest enigma. Join us on this mesmerizing journey through Beyond Our Reality, a journey through parallel worlds for the marvels of the unknown. So really was as batshit crazy as I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't that impressive. So even with incredibly weird subject matters like this, there was consistency. I mean, this shot here of the rabbit with the weird armadillo-y reptile-y type back to it. It's consistent across the whole shot. I don't see any weird warping or any weird changes. Even these patches look actually the same the whole way through the entire clip. I do think the visual effects artists, well, I, I, I'm not going to say they're going to be out of a job because they, they won't be out of a job. There will always be stuff. The visual effects artists will do better than AI. Uh, but this is definitely going to be a tool that they all use and uh, they're all going to need to learn to use. Obviously, Sora is not going to be open AI. It's not going to be actually an open source product. It's not going to be free and able to download. It will be behind a paywall. It's, of course, going to be heavily censored. They've already talked about this in all of their material that they're going to be making sure that nobody can use it to create videos with celebrities here and that kind of thing. Whether you agree with that or not, you know, for OpenAI is creating product, so they need to be careful, I suppose, in what they do within how it can be used and if it can be manipulated to do stuff that shouldn't be done with it. There are going to be open source versions of this. We know that there's work being done with open Sora and Sable video as well. So there's been me a lot of options out there. And while Sora definitely has the best consistency right now, this doesn't mean that this is going to be the best model forever. Okay, so it, it's going to be the best one if they get out in time. It will be the best one so far. But I'm, I'm pretty certain that the open source models are going to catch up to this at some point. So what do you guys think? Is Sora the most impressive AI video tool that you've seen so far? What sort of films will you be making with it? And uh, don't tell me it's going to be animes with your favorite waifus in it, you filthy lot. Tell me your other ideas down in the comments down below. And if you'd like to learn how to create AI images that look super realistic, 
maybe check out this video next. And like and subscribe for my next video too. Thanks to Drenemy, and I'll see you in the next one, Prompt Engineers.